All right, let's get these uh, October power rankings done. Recording this October 1st. Sometimes I record it the night before, but I just woke up. Let's get this done. Um, here's what we got. We got, uh, I forgot to do the uh, quarter three power rankings last year. I should probably line it up to fit the seasons, but I like to make it, you know, yearly season one, season two, season three, season four. Don't really have a great name for July, August, September, except quarter three. So anyway, uh, Deli All came fifth, Akiyama fourth, Vid third, Yevin with his first player of the month ever came second, and our clear winner by, by a whole lot was uh, Turds, who really dominated quarter three, as we call it. All right, let's get on to what happened this month. TTAC 15 advanced to the semifinals. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with TTAC 15. There will be a bunch of videos coming out on uh, various matches in the quarterfinals uh, eventually. You know, my stuff I put on a delay. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stop recording extraneous stuff at some point and stop being on a schedule where I try to get videos out every two days and instead be able to, like, put up videos close to as events happen. I think I think it's nice. I hope it's nice that I put up that I've been able to put up so many videos, but I also think it would be nice to uh, be able to sort of react to current events while people are still excited about said current events. So, you know, pluses and minuses. Um, now, you know, you see at the bottom here where it says update for GB59 and TTNM GB15. I did do that update, but I forgot to delete this line, so ignore that. You know, again, a perfectly made video, as always. So uh, we have TTAC 15 advanced to the semis. I always get much more hyped about majors in the semis. Uh, that's when I personally start feeling like, yeah, there's a real chance to win this. Um, the quarterfinals don't give me that feeling in the same way, but I know they do for some people. That doesn't mean, like, you're going to win. You know, semifinals, you're one out of four. Quarterfinals, you're one out of eight. But that's when, like, the dreams really start burgeoning for me. And it also, especially in a time when um, majors are five rounds and often there's a buy in the first round, the semifinals is when you really start to have needed to have won multiple rounds to get there and also very likely have faced very strong opposition. So to me, that's a real, there's a real jump between the semis and the quarters in my mind. Um... We got two chat tournaments or weekly opens. We have two GBs. We have between TTN, uh, between TTM and uh, the four by four and the three by three boards. We have four different uh, GBs there. It is a smaller number of games now than other GBs, and I, I do tend to favor TTA a little over TTM. So I I'm gonna try to give those the lowest weights. I'm not sure I really did that this month, but moving forward. I'm going to try to weight it as, like, weekly open is a bit more valuable than a GB, which is a bit more valuable than a, a TTN GB. I think that's fair. Not, like, massive changes in weights, just a, a little more valuable. All right, let's get on to our uh, top 10. In 10th, we have Blizzard, who is a quarterfinalist in TTAC 15. Uh, Blizzard is never made of power rankings before, but this is not because he doesn't play really well when he plays. It's because he kind of peaks out at one event a month, and while he tends to do quite well in that event, uh, usually it is, it's lined up that his best events have been months when a lot has happened, and uh, he has not quite made it, and it's really nice to see him here, because uh, I, I think he's very deserving, and if he played a lot, would, would make the power rankings quite a bit. Uh, this is not saying people, you know, have to play more or whatever. It is just to say, nice to see him earn a spot. In ninth, we have Sir Deagle, who puts in three top four finishes, including a second place. Uh, this is his second appearance on the power rankings, and both times he has put up just a number of solid results and could easily have placed higher, higher than ninth. Um, and it's nice to see him uh, landing on the list again. In eighth, we have Sir Smokes, who won an event, and you could probably have him as high as sixth, but I, I care about majors. I know... I do the thing of, like, we include majors when they end, but I try to um, give sort of high breaks to them, and I really do care about semifinal finishes. And so, um, <clears throat> yeah, I probably should have had Smokes two spots higher, but too late now. We're committed. In seventh, we have Seto. Now, Seto withdrew from TTAC 15, 
so his semifinal finish I'm valuing a little less than others. Um, one thing is, for some of my numbers, it is favorable to a player to withdraw rather than lose. This slightly inflates players like Nightwish, right? Because your win-loss rate is unaffected by withdrawals. And the later your withdrawal is, the more likely you avoided a match that was high risk, right? And I'm not saying this was done intentionally because it, it wasn't. You know, I'm sure he has good reasons. It is just to say that um, players like the Polish brothers, who are by far the all-time leaders in late-round activity losses, have somewhat inflated win percentages because, say, say you're 3-0 and at this point, right? 3-0 and is going to help your overall win percentage more than going 3-1 is, or even more than going 4-1 is, right? The only thing better is going 5-0 and and winning the tournament. So it is a way that my numbers don't have a great way to deal with and tends to, um, tends to inflate scores a little, which is to say I want to punish it here because we gotta, we got to balance out incentives, right? Anyway, that's not all at all important. What's important here is uh, Seto had a really great run in uh, TTAC 15. It's nice to see him playing TTACs, and I was pretty hyped that he had a chance to win it. Um, I was rooting for basically... I, I, I was happy about everyone in the semifinals, and any of them winning I thought would be really exciting. But uh, TTAC is basically the only tournament type Seto has never won, in large part, part because he has only, I believe, played two of them. And his runs are now remarkable. He made the finals of one, won the open game and lost on double closed. And this one, he now makes the semifinals. Seto might be the best TTAC player going, or ever, and uh, but he doesn't play them. And so it's, it's interesting to see him in them, and I was happy to get to see him here. In sixth, we have Delial, who has also made the semifinals of TTAC 15, but he is still going, so I, I gotta give him the nod here. And uh, Delial wasn't able to be very active this month. Uh, I think it's hard for him that his free days from work happen to align with when most people have finished their GBs, and so it is hard for him to get the games done, and that's just a struggle, and it's made it hard for him the last few months to, uh, to place as well as he normally would, but he is playing TTAC 15, and he is still in TTAC 15, and he beat Akiyama in the last round, which means he's had one of the hardest paths here. So I also wanted to give a little credit for that. Uh, in fifth, we have Tezuka, who is another semifinalist of TTA C15. Why am I saying TTA C? This is, pronunciations are tough this month. Everyone's yelling at me in the chat about how to pronounce Kona, which is how I'm going to try to pronounce it now. Um, but I was told by these evil Brits to pronounce it Koner. And now they, they turn it on me. I, I think the thing is, like, their accents automatically add R sounds to the end of stuff, or R-ish sounds. And when I add an R-ish sound in my accent, it sounds ridiculous. But, you know, they should have known better. I just feel like I'm being told one thing and then told another. Anyway, whatever. I'm still asleep. That's okay. Uh, in fifth, we have Tezuka. Yeah. Another great month for Tezuka. Really remarkable. He wins a TT TTAC 14 without losing a single game, and he is still, as I put this video up, undefeated in TTAC 15. That is insane. Well done to Tezuka. Uh, really well-deserved fifth. Fourth is Akiyama. Just a, a whole bunch of good results, enough to just edge him over this last crowd. As I've said, I really do value semifinals significantly more than quarterfinals, probably a bigger jump than most people do there. But quarterfinals is still really good. He did beat Delhi in the open game. So this is a as like you cannot imagine a better quarterfinals finish than this kind of thing. And he followed that up with three runner-ups and other events. Um, yeah, just really strong collection of events. In third, we have Viv, and because it's early morning and my brain's not quite here, I'm going to complain. I'm going to say, screw Viv. Uh, in major events, 
I, I can understand not wanting to put in move orders all the time or feeling like a game was stupid and bad and it's not important to put the move order. But if you put the start of the move order and just go like the game was over from then, because you didn't put the whole move order, I don't know whose cards were which. And it's a huge pain to figure out. And you could just type five more numbers. It's really not that hard. It's just like, I'm going to be annoying and obnoxious because I'm being pissy about losing. I don't know. I, yeah. Um, I probably shouldn't be openly annoyed by this because then people will do it just to annoy. But this is a, a good, nice community. And it really isn't that much effort. And I think it's, and maybe other people just disagree on this. I think it's so cool to have tournament records where we can piece together and show the runs people had and look at it. And if anyone ever is like, I want to see this game, I can just show that game in this run and we can talk about games. And I, I, I really value that in competitive events. I think it's so great to have, you know, footage of sporting events and teach. Yeah, is a game I care about. And I think it's really delightful to have that. And I wish we had it for past stuff. And I wish it wasn't only pervade through me. I wish other people could like show stuff, but I think it's so nice to have. And I find it, especially in majors, uh, really obnoxious to just put half of it in and then be like, I'm not going to put in the other five numbers. Uh, that, yeah, that irks me. So anyway, bid comes third, whatever. In second, we have Turds, who uh, won three whole events this month, which almost inevitably gets you not only Player of the Month, but Easy Player of the Month. Um, I had written up who was going to come first already, and Turds then made it a really close race. Uh, I ended up sticking with my pick, in large part because they beat Turds in TTAC 15, which spoils who it is. But Turds wins a chat tournament, a GB, a TTN GB, one of everything, gets a second in a GB, thirds and two more TTN GBs, makes the quarterfinals in TTAC 15. Uh, this is a pretty phenomenal month. Like, you look at this and you compare to past months, I guess there were a lot of events this month, but uh, this is basically every event. There were two CTs, he wins one of them. There were two GBs, he uh, wins one and comes second in the other. And there were four TTN GBs. He comes top four in three of them, including winning one of them. And there was a major, and he made the quarterfinals and grabbed an icon there. That's a fantastic month, and very easily could have won first. But I'm very excited about our first place winner this month. Our winner is Yevin. Yevin wins three events. Um, he wins two of the four TTN GBs. TTN GBs. He wins... A, uh, a TTA GB, uh, he makes a finals in a chat tournament where Turds did beat him, but he beats Turds in TTA C15. Given that they both won three events, I value Turds' events a little higher. They both have a bunch of other nice results. Turds has a few more, but Yevin got the really big win, and he loses 2-1 in the semifinals. We didn't talk about this because I was being tilted, um, but when Seto withdrew, uh, Lucky Loser went to bid, um, who lost in the quarterfinals to Tezuka, got 2 0 there, but did 2 1 Yevin to advance to the finals. I am happy that the lucky loser spot went to a quarterfinalist. Um, there's only ever been one time when someone lost in an event that was a single elimination event. You know, there have been double elimination events recently. Cookie uh, lost to Kaus Debonair, but went on to beat him twice in finals and grand finals to take the tournament. Um, so, like, you know, that's been done. We've seen that. But we have only once in TTA history see seen someone lose in a single-player tournament and go on to win the event. And it actually is one of the more historically important tournaments ever. It was SE Tifa, and Beast Day loses in the quarterfinals to Lionheart, but Lionheart withdraws, and they just go, okay, I guess Beast Day can keep going. That's the natural person to continue. I agree with that. I, I think, in general, my instinct, personally, would be, you know, if the person withdraws, you continue the tournament. We can add someone in if it's early, but if it's late, it's too close to the title to add in someone that's already lost and just put them a win or two away from the from winning the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not, I'm not complaining there. This is not my complaint to the video. I'm just saying that would be my instinct there. 
Um, but my second instinct would be uh, the person who just lost to the person who advanced gets to replace them. In that case, it would be Blizzard. But advancing bid was advancing another quarterfinalist, and I am completely okay with that, though it would have been kind of the third thing on my preference list. But I'm glad it didn't go to someone who went out early. I like the sense of someone who has earned a deep run in this tournament getting to continue that deep run. So um, <clears throat> if, if he wasn't irking me right now, I uh, would be happy to see Vid taking that spot. That said, um, Vid did beat Yevon, which, you know, I was sad about because I think Yevon's had an unbelievable run, and I do root for the person who has not yet lost in the tournament. Um, but so... Yevon does make semifinals. He is out in the semifinals, but this capped an incredible month of... And following up on winning a TTN major last month and having a fantastic month last year, this is an amazing two-month run from Yevon. He is the fifth time anyone's won two players of the month in a row, and only three other players have ever done so. No one has ever won it three straight. I think... As good as Yevon has been, and as good as I expect him to be in months going forward, uh, because almost certainly next month's Player of the Month, um, unless they do nothing else and Yevon just racks up everything, will be the winner of TTAC 15. He probably won't be the first one to win three Players of the Month in a row, but he has been phenomenal. He wins three events and makes semis of a major. He's top two in four events. A phenomenal month by Yevon. I think even better than his last month, which is hard to do. Um, unbelievable run by Yevon. Uh, if I was him, I would be very proud of these pairs of months. Uh, finally, for our Player of the Year race, uh, last we looked at this, Deli All had a big lead. I'm not going to give the standings here. You can check out the leaderboard if you want to see them. But the pack is closing in, and it's now a real race between Deli All and Turds. It is very close. Deli All still has the lead. But given Turds's um, greater activity, uh, Turds is probably like if we had betting favorites, you know, I think Turds would be the favorite to uh, take it. If he does, this would be Turds' second year in a row winning my Player of the Year race, um, and this would be Deli All's second year in a row coming second in it, and both years finishing very close to each other. Um, but they're they're going to come top two again. Akiyama very narrowly came third last year. This year he's a bit further behind. But uh, these two players have week in, month in and month out been the uh, the two best players. I, I don't think that's a big surprise to anyone. Uh, I do think for the actual player of the year race, the, the obvious names to come to mind are Cookie, won um, S.E. Zidane. I won, but Cookie hasn't done anything else. I won Triad Wars 15, but I haven't done anything else. Um, Kaus came second in Zidane, but he hasn't done anything else. Uh, Aki, no. Yes, no, no, Turds came second in Triad Wars 15, and he has done a whole bunch of other things. And now Delial is in the semifinals of TTAC 15. Tezuka's in the semifinals of TTAC 15, but he's been very inactive this year. This is actually, I think, his first appearance on the power rankings this year. Now, if he wins it and repeats winning a major without losing a single game, like, you gotta consider Tezuka. But I would think Delial and Turds both have very deep major runs and have been really dominant in other events, that there's a very good case they're two of the top three. But the other person I want to throw out there is, like, currently, I think, should be the top three for you, the voters, player of the year race. I think it's Deli Alturds and Yevon. Yevon wins a TTN major. I didn't list that yet, but he wins a TTN major. He makes the semifinals in a TTA major. Oh, Turds also won Cosmos, and Deli finaled that, which is obviously good for both their cases. Better for Turds, of course. But uh, that means Turds grabbed a major this year. Um, Deli All has two very deep runs in majors, and in the months he could play, he's just been the best player on the site, basically. Uh, Turds has been able to play more, but also does have more major success as well, so far. Um, and then Yevon wins a TTN major, makes a semifinals here, makes a semifinals in Cosmos. They are his first 
TTA icon since 2005, and he's racked up two semifinals, and he's just won two Player of the Months in a row. He's winning so many events right now. Um, if I was voting on Player of the Year today, it would be Dully Alterds or Yevon, and I have no idea which of the three I'd pick. I would think right now that Dully All is in third. We'll see how TTAC goes. I would think he's in third, and I don't know between Turds and Yevon. It depends what you value. You know, is Cosmos or a TTN double elimination major a bigger tournament to win? I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you could go a lot of different ways on this. But uh, I, I think it's between those three. And uh, my player of the year race is a kind of thing that focuses on the, the, you know, every week events rather than the big stuff. But once you start weighting the big stuff more, it's between those three and you could go any which way. All right, uh, we'll we'll call it there. Sorry for being a complaining person today. Uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't record like right as I wake up. That's probably not the best idea. And my my voice, as you can probably tell, isn't isn't quite to its its normal uh, vibrancy, as it were. All right. Good night. I'm gonna go back to sleep.